Okay, so it's time to do the installation of the pond pump. Before we get started, I want to tell you a little bit about the pump that we chose for this particular installation. Um, it's the Helix, it's a Helix external pond pump. Uh, we chose a 6800 pump, and I don't want to get uh, too detailed into the math of the, of the equation, but the pond's approximately 5,000 gallons. We want to turn the pond about 5,000 gallons an hour, so we have to choose a bigger pump. So we can do the system curve and show you, but we're using the 6800 to give us approximately 5,000 gallons an hour turnover on the pond. Okay. Uh, there's a couple differences in pumps. There's a, a self-priming pump and a not self-priming pump, and this is not a self-priming pump. So uh, I will tell you though, I know of one of these pumps that's still running after 26 years. I personally have one that's about 16 years old running on one of my water features at our shop. And I know several contractors that have them around 19 or 20 years, and they're still running efficiently. So uh, I think it's a fantastic pump to choose from which is the non-self-priming pump. Uh, what you're gonna have to do to prime it is you're gonna have to have this priming pot. It's also a spot for us to um, capture any leaf debris that might get by our pre-filters. And um, since I'm gonna wanna add water to this, we're gonna put some check valves below grade and I'll show you where we're gonna do that so we can add water to this and, and purge the line of all the air that might get trapped in here. So um, there's a couple seals that you're gonna wanna know about. Uh, it comes with these pump unions, and it just comes with a, a simple gasket right there. You don't need to put any threads on here because this gasket is going to keep it sealed. We usually hand tight this when we do it, and I might give it a, a snug as hard as I can here. Might put a wrench on it and barely give it a turn, and that's going to keep it um, from leaking. There's also a union right here we're going to check, and a union right here we're going to check. So. Um, if, if you leak air from these two spots, the pump is going to be running, but you're not going to be producing any water flow. So there's a, a little orientation of the pump on the one we chose, and we're going to go ahead and get started um, gluing up this three-way valve. Okay, I want to talk about some fittings before we jump into some glue and primer. We're going to have to make this elbow to come down below grade and tie into our lines. And we have a couple selections here. This is probably the most common fitting that you're going to be able to find. It's just a 90-degree elbow. And you can see how compact it is. And in some cases, you might have to use a, a really tight elbow like that. In this case, I don't have to be that tight. Um, this is another pretty fairly common option that you can get is running a couple of 45s. So the friction loss is going to be better in this unit than that. But then I also have this really cool long sweep. And these are the ones that we're going to use. Um, but I would just recommend if you can get away with a couple of 45s or these sweep elbows, you're gonna get better, uh, better flow and dynamics out of the pump. So I'll make a mark right here, and that's where we'll go ahead and cut this. We can go ahead and double check it with a pen. If you wanna go ahead and measure it, this is about an inch and a half in here, and this is a, a short collar one. I got an inch right there. So I need about a two and a half inch piece. So that's what we're gonna be cutting. Okay, so that's the actual piece we're going to glue to. I'm going to go ahead and cut another one for the other side. Okay, so those are our actual pieces we're going to cut there. Um, we're going to glue to. One of the next things we're going to do is I'm going to have these guys coming down. So this is where my tie-in is going to be. So that's about the right, that's about the right um, height for that. So let me cut a couple of these guys. All right. So I have my two pipes extended below grade, and while I have everything opened up right here, I want to explain something to you uh, about flooded suction and pr uh, priming the lines. When I take this lid off of the priming pot and I add water to this. The, the water will travel through these pipes and they're going to come down and they're going to go into these two pipes. Now these pipes lead to the pond and if I didn't have any uh, one-way valves in there, the pond would just start to fill up with water. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to install a one-way valve, it's a check valve, in each one of these lines so that way as the water comes back in here, it gets stopped right here. Now one thing you need to know is these lines that are coming from the pond, they're below water level. So when we fill the pond up completely, these lines will be flooded all the way back to the station. They're going to flood all the way to the back end of this valve, 
and the priming pot will let us flood the lines all the way to this side of the valve so there won't be any air trapped inside there. So let me, let me give you an example of this, the one-way valve. This one's, of course, um, colored, but there's a valve inside there. And this is a, just a flapper valve. It's really loose. You can hear it bounce up and down like that. I brought this clear one along with me to show you there's that flapper in there. Now this one's spring-loaded, so I, I typically don't use the spring-loaded because it, it takes more power for your pump to push that spring open. Where the flapper valve, you know, this one won't move. The flapper valve, it's very easy to push open and it's also very easy to keep the water in the line. So um, I hope that explains the flooded suction and how, how we're gonna prime this with the one-way valves. I'm gonna go ahead and start uh, gluing this all together.